Hey there, Martin here and today I wanted to share with you just a quick tip on how to use the radial symmetry tool in Blender 2.79 and also 2.8. I found this workflow very useful when creating the radial patterns that the Greek architecture, engravings and decorations are full of. And even though it's just one possible way of creating this radial pattern, you can for example use Photoshop, Illustrator or even Substance Designer, uh, I found it very nice to be able to create something like this directly in Blender. So in this tutorial we will go through using the symmetry for sculpting in Blender 2.79 and 2.8 since the layout changed a little. I will then also show you how to bake your radial pattern into black and white image to use as an alpha map. Alright, let's get to it. So here we are in Blender 2.79. And let's start off by creating a simple plane and subdividing it six times using the simple mode. Apply it and then switch to edit mode by hitting tab and select all the faces. With that hit U and select smart UV project. This way we laid out our UV map before the geometry itself became too heavy. Also at this point duplicate your plane and call one sculpt while the other bake or anything you want really, just make sure you name it. Now let's go ahead and subdivide the geometry a few more times until we hit about million faces. Uh, we will be baking the sculpted result to a lower polyplane, so now it doesn't really matter, the poly count is high. And with that we have our base for the sculpting. Now let's go ahead and switch to the sculpt mode. Here somehow I always have trouble finding the clay strips brush, don't know why. Well it doesn't really matter anyway, because the layout changed in Blender 2.8 as you will later see. Using the clay strips brush I set auto smooth to 0.1 and check if the settings is actually set to add. And then it's time to start setting up the actual radial symmetry. You do that by going to the symmetry pull down menu and deactivating the X, Y or Z mirroring if you have it activated. Rather we'll be using the radial values set Z to 64. Uh, from previous experimentation I found higher numbers work best for my purposes. But feel free to set this number any way you want, really whatever you like best. And now it's time to experiment. Just paint with your clay brush and see what happens. It's so simple and fast to create cool radial shapes with this symmetry tool. You can also play with the shape of the stroke by changing the curve. There are several presets, uh, definitely try them out. Basically the ones on the left give you smoother results, the ones on the right sharper strokes with either pointy center or edges. With the high number of repetitions it sometimes tends to get slower, so I deactivated the auto smooth. Uh, it gives you smoother, less jagged results, but we can smooth everything later and it's better to work faster. Now I'm trying to find the perfect size and strength of the brush, which would give me well defined shapes and edges. This seems quite okay, so let's go ahead and create a shape I'm after. And since on this channel I'm all about ancient Greece, let's create a sort of wave pattern uh, the Greeks were using all the time. This part is really about trial and error, you probably won't hit the right shape the first time, but the experimentation part is also what's so fun about this symmetry tool. Since we have a bit of time, let's throw in a short fun fact. The Greek pattern, or rather the technique of repetitive shapes, actually had a name. The angular swastika shaped decors were called meandros, while the rounded shapes like our wave pattern are now called Greek running scrolls. These shapes appeared everywhere in the ancient Greece, on vases, in architecture and also on hoplite shields, armor and helmets. The meanders symbolized unity or infinity, while the running wave was simply a symbol of the sea. After I'm done I go ahead and using the smooth tool with really low strength like 0.1 I smooth out the jagged edges. Great thing about the symmetry is also that you don't have to sculpt on the whole plane. 
You just sculpt on one segment and all the changes are transferred by the symmetry, even the smoothing. Since I want this engraving to look like it was handmade, I then use the crease brush and softly trace the edges of the ornament, which introduces some unevenness to it. To see the sculpting better, I'm using a matte cap, which you can activate by hitting N and setting it in the shading tab. I then go back into the sculpting mode and trace the shapes I created. And then again, only with a different curve for the brush, something more soft. Cool, now smooth again and also let's use a flattened brush to trace the edges of the shape and to add in some unevenness again. Finally, what I want to do is flatten the top of the shape, which I do by choosing the scrape brush and setting its plane to view plane. This way I basically ensure the scraping is done only under the angle I'm looking from, which is 90 degrees to the plane. If that doesn't make sense, just watch what happens in the video. How the top of the shape is being flattened. Definitely experiment with this setting of the scrape tool. It's great for sculpting hard surfaces, especially something like stone. And with that we created our radial pattern in Blender 2.79. Alright, let's just quickly have a look at how different the layout is in 2.8. I already created my plane, subdivided it to about million faces and created UVs for it. All the keyboard shortcuts and modifiers use the same way as in 2.79. Uh, however, if you get to the sculpting mode, you can immediately see some changes. Uh, first off, the sculpting brushes are listed to the left. However, the settings are elsewhere, up top. Here you can set your radius and strength, as well as other settings like texture, stroke, curve and others. And right here, in the right hand corner, is hiding our symmetry menu. Just set it up as you would in Blender 2.79, so no mirror, just radial Z uh, set to about 64 repetitions. And I don't know if it's just me, but immediately the results and the feel of the sculpting in 2.8 feel somehow more smooth and faster. Of course, I edited out all the bad attempts at drawing the curve. Uh, still, I may be wrong, but I think the developers did something to the sculpting in this version and made it faster than in 2.79. So good job, Blender guys. It seems they put away the scrape brush though, so shame on you for that. Instead, I'm using the inverted clay brush with the curve set to root preset and I managed to flatten things a bit. Anyway, this was just a fun insert to show you how the layout changed in 2.8. However, since we are going to be baking a displacement map and 2.8 does not support this option at this time, let's switch to 2.79 again. I don't know about you, but I always found the baking system in Blender 2.79 a bit weird and very unintuitive. So hopefully when it's implemented into 2.8, it will be improved. You start off by creating a new image in the image editor window, set its resolution to something like 4K and name it Bake. Now add in a new window, the node editor. If you don't already have some shader created in your scene, do it now, otherwise it won't let you add in any node. So I created just a simple diffuse shader and now shift A and add in an image texture node and choose the image you just created. Now make sure you have your image texture selected in the node editor, otherwise the baking process won't work. Really don't ask me why it works this way. Anyway, let's do some baking now. This is where the duplicated plane called Bake comes in. Just select your Sculpt plane first, uh, then Shift select the Bake plane. Also don't forget to switch from Cycles to Blender Render. In the Properties Render tab, scroll down and open the Bake menu. Here in the Bake mode, choose Displacement and don't forget to check the Selected to Active button. 
And after that you are ready to hit the bake button. And I get an error. This is a strange thing that sometimes happens in 2.79. Basically whenever you get the no objects or images found to bake to message, you just go to the object you want to bake uh, and select all its faces in the edit mode. Something then clicks inside Blender and you are ready to bake. Of course, since we sculpted just a shallow shape, not some huge protrusions and crevices, the height map's texture is barely visible. If you save and you use this image as a displacement map, it will work all fine. However, if you want to export your map as a black and white image and use it in some other way, you just hit normalize before baking. You can then just open the image in Photoshop or other image editing software and increase its contrast to make it black and white. The final stage of this process is just about plugging in the exported image into a displacement map socket of a material. First though, definitely switch back to Cycles Render. To see your displacement rendered properly, you first have to enable the experimental feature in the Render tab and then in the settings for your material, use true displacement. Finally, just add a subdivision modifier to the bake plane and check the adaptive dicing option. And now you can plug in your texture into the displacement socket. Also make sure you're using the exported texture and that in color you set non-color data. Of course, since I exported the image with the normalize option on, now the displacement is too intense. I have to decrease its intensity a little, uh, for example by using the curves node and lowering the top point. To see your adjusted result, uh, you just go back to the solid rendering and then click rendered again. It refreshes the dicing and here you can see that the curves really helped. And that's it, your low polyplane is now displaced by the radial pattern height map we created in this tutorial. So my friends, I hope this video was useful and you discovered something about radial symmetry sculpting or baking and rendering stuff in Blender. Also, you can definitely use this tutorial in combination with my previous Aspis shield course to displace the edges of your shield. If you haven't, definitely check out the course, I packed a lot of info about my workflow in it. And also if you like this video, you can subscribe, share or comment, I'll be happy to hear from you. See you next time.